Hey guys, what's up? This is Etsuki Tutorials, and this is FPS 1.3. Uh, this episode we're going to be going over how to take the WASAD or the arrow keys if you really want to use the arrow keys and turn that into actual moving around. Uh, so now you'll be able to look around and move around so it's going to feel a whole lot closer to a real first person shooter. So yeah, let's get started. Let me turn no, no. Go away. Alright. So the script we're going to be making today is the player movement script, and as of right now, we're only only going to be using two variables. Um, later on, we're going to add more variables, but we're just going to keep it simple today and just use these two. So the first one is walk acceleration, and that's going to be a float. Basically, the only job of this is to um, add a variable so that we can change how quickly or how slowly the player accelerates as we're walking. Um, so the way it's going to work is uh, we're going to have two input axes, horizontal and vertical. So the vertical input axis is going to be W and S, and the horizontal input axis is going to be A and D. And when you access the input axes, it's just going to give you back either a positive one, a negative one, or a zero, depending on which keys are being pressed. So we're just going to multiply that uh, input axis, or the negative one, or the zero, or the positive one, by walk acceleration, and add that as a relative force to the rigid body, so that we can, uh, you know, just have a variable amount of acceleration for how fast the player starts walking, or if we want it to be a more slow movement. All right, so the next variable that we're going to be having is the camera object variable, and that is going to be a game object variable. So that means instead of saving a number or a string, it's going to be saving a one particular game object in the scene. Uh, and that game object is going to be the uh, camera game object. And we're going to be using this so that we can access the script of the camera, the uh, mouse look script. And the only... Uh, variable that we want to access in the mouse look script is current Y rotation because we want to know the Y rotation of where the camera is looking so that we can match the player up with that so that we so when we press forward we're not we're actually walking forward for where the camera is pointing alright so alright so the next thing we need to understand before we can actually get into the script is we got to know what a rigid body is. You've probably heard of a rigid body before in Unity. They're very commonly used, and it's pretty simple. A rigid body, basically, you add this component to any game object, and that game object becomes a physical thing. Gravity and... Yay, text message. Gravity and momentum are actually like applied to this game object. Uh, so that means without a rigid body, it's just a game object. It's just going to stay exactly where it is when you first created it, um, unless you change it in code. But it's, it's like this digital entity that really doesn't have any physical properties to it. So when you apply the rigid body, that's when physics are applied to your game object. So we want to make this game feel as realistic as possible, so we're going to be using the rigid body uh, to make the uh, player movement actually happen and work and feel right. So one thing I have to know about the rigid body, um, when we attach it to our player, what we're going to do is freeze the rotation. Uh, this doesn't mean that the uh, game object can't rotate anymore, it just means that the uh, physics system isn't going to rotate it for us because we want the rotation of the player to be uh, completely controlled by us, whereas where we want the gravity and the momentum and all that fun stuff to be controlled by Unity's physics engine. So when we freeze the rotation, it's still going to have, you know, it's still going to have physics applied to it, so it's going to have gravity, momentum, it's just not going to rotate anywhere, the rotation's going to be frozen. So when the rotation is frozen, the only way that we're going to actually rotate it is uh, we're going to access uh, the camera object and then we're going to access the script and then we're going to get current Y rotation so that we know exactly where we want it to rotate so that everything else is handled by the physics engine 
and that's handled by us. Alright, so this line of code here, basically all it's going to do is make sure that our player, or the capsule that is the player, is going to face the same way as the camera um, as far as around the y-axis. So remember, when we're rotating around the y-axis and y is vertical, it's going to rotate around this way so we get that movement. Um, and the reason why we don't want to rotate around the X or Z axis is because, you know, if you play a first person shooter and you're looking straight up and you press forward, you're going to walk this way, not that way. So it's, uh, there's really no reason to rotate around the X, X axis. And we already established that rotating around the Z axis gives you this movement and that doesn't make any sense in a first person shooter. So we're only going to be affecting the y-axis because we're dealing with the player movement. And we always want the player to be an upright capsule. And we don't want it to rotate around that way. So, yeah, let's go over how we do that in code. Alright, so we have transform.rotation, which is a quaternion, equal quaternion.euler. So remember, quaternion.euler gives you a quaternion based on an x, y, and z that you give it that represents Euler angles. So the first, for x, we're going to give it 0 because we don't want to rotate around the x-axis. And then for the y-axis, we're going to do camera object. So this is going to be the actual game object that is the camera. Um, and we're going to have to predefine this in the inspector, otherwise this isn't going to work. Uh, dot get component mouse look script. So we can actually pull current Y rotation out of um, the game object itself. We have to uh, pull it out of the component that is the mouse look script. So um, camera object dot get component mouse look script. So this whole thing pretty much turns into the component mouse look script. And then we can just write dot current Y rotation. So now we're pulling the current Y rotation out of the mouse look script. So we have that. All of that is inside of the Y parameter of quaternion.euler. And then we're going to give it 0 for the Z because we don't want to rotate around the Z. So quaternion.euler 0. And then this whole thing is just pulling current Y rotation out of the mouse look script, comma 0. So that way we're only rotating around the y-axis. So now that we added this line of code, our um, capsule or our player is always going to be facing the same way as the camera. So when we press forward, we're actually going to move forward and not some other direction that's not relative to the camera. Okay, so this next line of code is going to apply the actual movement to the player based on the uh, keys that we press. So we're going to first of all access the rigid body and yeah, another text message. So we're going to be accessing the rigid body uh, just like how when we access transform we want to do it lowercase because we're accessing the transform that is attached to our game object. In this case we're, attached, or we're accessing the rigid body that is attached to our game object. So we're going to do it lowercase because it's the actual thing and not the class. Um, and then we're going to be using a function with inside uh, rigid body, which is add relative force. And we're going to be using add relative force instead of add force, because what add force does is it um, it adds the force or the movement or adds momentum based on the world axis or the x, y, and z of the world, and not based on our game object. So that means. Uh, like let's say you were pressing forward, it would always move along the z-axis and when it uh, just would be completely regardless of where the camera and the game object is facing. So we're going to do add a relative force because that's going to add the force relative to how our object is rotated in 3D space. And add a relative force is pretty simple, you just give it an x, y, and z. Uh, so let's go over our x, y, and z. So for the x, we're going to be using this line here, and we're going to do walk acceleration times input dot get access horizontal. So what this uh, 
input.getAccessHorizontal is going to give us either 1, 0, or negative 1 based on whether we are pressing, let me look at my keyboard, A and D. So yeah, and then for the Y axis, uh, we're going to do 0 because Y is vertical and you don't use WASAD to move up and down. Um, that is going to be dependent on whether or not we press the space bar. But we're going to put that in another line of code later on. Uh, today we're just doing walking slash running. And then for the Z axis, which is forward and backwards, uh, we're going to do walk acceleration times input dot get axis vertical. So a either 1, 0, or negative 1 based on whether we are pressing W or S or neither of them. Alright, that's all the code we have to go over today, so let's actually jump on Unity and see what it looks like on the computer screen. Alright, here we are inside of Unity, and let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to need is the actual player capsule. So we're going to go to Game Object, Create Other, Capsule, and let's rename this Player Capsule. Player Capsule, there we go. Alright, and then we need to attach the main camera to it. So, now that our main camera is attached to the player capsule, let's make sure that on the X position and Z position, it's set to zero, so it's in the very center of the capsule. And then we just want to adjust the Y um, until that it's about eye level and it looks kind of like a person, sort of. Um, so there we go, and player capsule, we have automatically the mesh that is the capsule itself. We have the capsule collider so that it's a physical capsule that, so that it can detect collisions. Uh, and then we have the mesh renderer so that we can see the capsule. And right now we're on the inside of the capsule, so the main camera isn't going to see it, but we'll still be able to see it in the uh, scene view. Uh, and the only thing that we are missing is the rigid body. So let's go to Components, Physics, Rigid Body. And there we have it, the rigid body. Uh, and the only thing that we need to change is freeze rotation. We're going to freeze it on the X, Y, and Z. Uh, let me show you what happens if we don't freeze it on the X, Y, and Z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip it just a little bit. And now when we play, our capsule should fall over. So we, we don't really want that because now our player is sideways. So let's watch that one more time. Boom, physics. So what we want to happen is we want to freeze the rotation like so. So when it falls, it still has physics. It still is realistically physics but our capsule didn't fall over. Um, so let's change that back to 0, 0, 0, so it's perfectly upright. And we have our rotation frozen on all the X, Y, and Z. And now we just need to create a JavaScript called player movement script. And let's attach that to our player capsule. And let's open that up and start making our variables. So the first one is var uh, walk acceleration acceleration yeah float and we want to ballpark this around five. Now we want var camera object game object. So our variable camera object is going to be of type game object, just like how we declare another variable as a float. So let's go back into Unity and see what that looks like. So here we have the number that we can just adjust to whatever we want. And now we actually want to assign this to the game object that is the camera, which we have right here. So we're going to drag and drop that there. And now in the script, whenever we access camera object, we're actually looking at this object here. So now let's go back to MonoDevelop and let's start with some code. 
So our first line is transform.rotation equals quaternion dot Euler. And we don't want to rotate around the X. And for the Y, we want to do a camera object. Object, I can't type today, dot get components. Mouse look script dot current not it's not capitalized because it's a variable y rotation comma zero because we don't want to rotate around the z axis so let's go into unity and see if that actually worked I'm going to select the player capsule so that we can actually uh, see this blue arrow should represent, well it's not blue anymore, but this arrow is going to represent uh, pointing forward. So let's make sure that it sticks with our camera when we move, and it does. So now the Y rotation of the camera is now matched for the uh, player capsule. But we can't walk around yet. I'm pressing WSAD and nothing's happening, so we need to make that bit of code. So let's go back to mono develop and let's type in that line. So we have rigid body dot add relative force. So we're accessing the rigid body that is attached to our game object and we're adding force relative to how we are rotated. Um, rigid body dot add relative force. Um, for the X we want to do input dot get access horizontal and so that's our one zero or negative one depending on whether or not we are pressing a and d and we're going to multiply that by walk acceleration and then we don't want anything on the y-axis and then we're going to do input dot get access vertical um, and multiply that by walk acceleration and close up the parentheses and put a semicolon and there we are we're done let's uh, go to unity and see if that worked so pressing WSAD and it works I can sidestep I can walk forward and backwards um, but it's a little bit slippery right now. I think the acceleration needs to be a bit faster, so let's put it up to about 24. And there we go. That feels better, but it's, it's very slippery. And I'm at high risk of slipping off the map. Whoops, there we go. And I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. This sucks. Okay. So it works, um, but it's not done yet. We still need to add some stuff um, like whether or not our player should be able to use WSAD while we're in the air. Um, we need to add a deacceleration function so that while we are on the ground, it slows down and doesn't feel so slippery. Um, then we need to add a jump and we need to add a couple of other things. Um, so, oh, we also need to add a maximum walking speed, because right now you could hold down W and just fly forward and just keep on accelerating, and that's not realistic, because, you know, you, you can't do that in real life. Like, once you, like, start running, you kind of reach your max speed, and that's as fast as you're going to go. Um, so that's what we need to simulate, we need to add code to do that later. Uh, but for now, you can pretty much walk around on any any surface that has a collider attached to it. Uh, so yes, I hope you enjoyed this episode of VTSKI Tutorials. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'll see you guys later.